Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hey, hi, how are you? My name's Kimberly and this is my channel. Today is Tuesday, so this is my gruesome and glamorous true crime story time. It's not really long, it's kind of long. Anyway, I don't just do true crime on my channel. My channel also has very light things as well. The true crime, obviously not light at all, but I do unboxings, makeup tutorials, fad diets, product reviews, you know, light, fun stuff. But if any of that sounds, you know, fun to you, you should consider hanging out with me again and subscribing and then hitting that notification bell because then it'll send you a notification that I have a new video up. You should do it. It's free and it helps me. And you know, maybe we could be friends, right? If you're not new, welcome back. I love you guys so, so much. Everybody that returns, you guys just don't even know. When people leave me comments and I get to respond to you guys, it makes me so excited. Uh, but please be kind. I had someone tell me I should kill myself because I didn't like the new Tamagotchi. I mean, anyway, <laughs> but I still love you guys. And if you want to say something like that, I'd prefer you didn't, but you know, whatever. Okay, guys, I'm done with that intro. I'm done, but I have to give you guys a disclaimer. This is probably the most disgusting, vile, I've just never, it just, ugh, this person is unreal. I mean, th this stuff really happened, but it's so disgusting and unbelievable. This is for mature audience only. There will be a murder bestiality, necrophilia. You guys, it's so bad. It is so bad. So if you have a weak stomach, you need to exit out of this video because this is just bizarre out of this world. One of the most disgusting serial killers that you probably never even heard of. And he is just, bleh. so <laughs> with that being said, Viewer discretion is advised. I love doing that. I hope you guys like it too. <laughs> okay, so the person I am doing this story on, true story, is Yahim Kroll. And he is a German cannibal serial killer. Okay, he had a few names that he went by. And I'm probably going to say I'm wrong, but one is the Deesburg Maneater and the Roar Hunter. And I'm probably saying that completely wrong. I do want to tell you guys the German names and the German cities. I'm probably going to just completely butcher them, but I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. Okay. I also want to let you guys know that this video is for education and entertainment purposes only. And everything that I'm telling you is the truth as far as I know it. This case has a lot of information that differs from different sources. It's pretty much telling the same story, but little details here and there just don't really add up. So if I say something that you guys know is not true, I apologize. I'm doing my best. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, jump into this case. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. <gasps> jump. Okay, we're jumping in. All right, so this is the case of Johim Kroll. Johim Kroll was probably the most intellectually challenged serial killer to have ever been around. I think if you guys are into true crime and very fascinated by true crime and you know about a lot of different serial killers, a lot of them are charming. They're clever. They're manipulative. They, they are very, it's easy for them to persuade you to do things. Okay. This was not Yohim Kroll. 
Jordan Kroll was very intellectually challenged. Okay, so yeah, first serial killer that I've ever covered that is this intellectually challenged. You know, I don't even know if there is another one that I know of. If I find another one, I'll tell you. But this guy, eh. Okay, so this guy is the most disgusting serial killer ever. And yeah, Johan Kroll was born on April 17th, 1933. And there's no information about his his parents' names or sibling names, but he was the last child of eight. So he's the eighth child. He had six sisters, one brother, and then there was him. Okay, I don't know anybody's names or anything else. His father did go away to the war at some point, and he was said to have been a prisoner of war. I don't know if he ever came back, but he did eventually eventually uh, pass away, okay? But before he passed away, his mother and his father just really didn't have any love left to give. He was the last of eight children and they just really didn't give him any love, affection, and attention. Now, Yohim has said that his mother was the only person that didn't criticize and ridicule him, but she still didn't really act lovingly towards him. His father really treated him poorly. He made fun of him all the time. He called him stupid, a loser. And his siblings also harassed him constantly. They would put the blame on him for everything. He was beaten very frequently. And he also would wet the bed. And he wet the bed for a really, really long time long time. So anytime a person, and I, I'm not saying that you're a serial killer, but there's like a trifecta of things that can possibly lead you to believe that someone may end up being a serial killer or a murderer of some kind and bedwetting is on there. Don't believe me? Look it up. Lots of serial killers bedwet. And I believe that that's because they're nervous or scared and then they wet the bed. So there's a lot, there's a lot going on there, okay? So yeah, he's having a horrible life at home. Life is just, oh, just totally awful. Now this kid goes to school. Yohim goes to school. And, and please don't think I'm making excuses for him because I'm not. I hate him. I, I hate him more than probably any of the serial killers that I have uh, talked to you guys about to date. Now, there may be another one I'm going to hate more later, but I, this, I hate him. I hate him. Okay, so he goes to school and guess what? He's bullied. He's ridiculed. He's beaten up. So he's getting this from home and school. This kid has no safe place no safe place, but he's very, very slow. His IQ was tested to be around 76 as a grown man. So as a child, it most likely was lower. I don't know. But after being at the school for a while, he really couldn't write, read, or understand numbers and math. He just couldn't understand. So he was sent to a special needs school. Now, at this special needs school, there was probably a lot of kids that were bullied at their old schools and they were sent here because of their special needs. And these special needs kids bullied Kroll. He got bullied by everyone. Well, when he turned 10, he's in Germany, he actually got recruited into a Nazi training camp and... Well, you know, he, when people would talk to him, it took him a while to respond. Don't know if he was just trying to figure out what are they saying? Okay, this is the response. So he took a while to respond. He had trouble understanding direction and he was very weak. So he was tiny. He was a, a little guy. And then he always was getting ridiculed about the way he looks. And I hate saying this. I feel like a mean person, but I hate him. But I feel like a mean person saying this. The way this guy looks, he does look like a murderer. He looks like he would be doing something sketchy in the corner. He has 
this little bald head. He's got these ears that stick straight out. My daughter's ears stick straight out, but she don't got all the other things. He's got like beady eyes, big old glasses. He's weak and slow. So everybody is <laughs> looking at him like, there's something wrong, you know? This is, I feel bad for saying that, but he looked the part, okay? He looked the part. So Johim's father ends up passing away. And when he passes away, Johim, his, his mom and his siblings, they move into this two bedroom shack and they become farmhands. And Kroll loves this. He's about 15 years old when this is going on. And he absolutely loves it. And what he loves in particular is he really loves the slaughterhouse. And mind you, this is around 1945 to 1950 when he's at this, this farm. So the killing of the animals in the slaughterhouse was very brutal. It was very bloody. It was very gory. The animals felt pain. You saw that they were struggling. It was really hard, I would say, for a normal person to be around something like that. Even today, it's more humane the way that they slaughter the animals, but still it'd be hard to be around knowing something's being killed, right? Well, no, no, not for Johan. He was watching them cut the heads off the pigs, and disembowel them, you know, all that, slit their throat, beat them, whatever. Johan loved it and at about 15, he started to feel like a sexual awakening by watching this. It turned him on so much. Like he would get an erection from seeing these animals being slaughtered. Okay. Gross. Gross. So around the age of 15, 16, he's having this sexual awakening and he calls it these funny feelings he was feeling. He was feeling the funny feelings. The funny feelings, I think, are like his intense sexual arousal. But that's what I think. That's what I think. There was another thing that happened on the farm that really, really turned Yohim on. He watched the farmer inseminate a cow. The farmer inserted his whole arm up into the cow's vagina and he's looking, he got so turned on, he was like, I bet I could put my penis in that cow. And so he did. He had sex with the cows very frequently. Um, he also most likely had sex with other farm animals. I think he would pretty much have sex with any animal he was able to have sex with. Okay. Because that's just who he was. Well, he does try to have some sort of relationship with a woman. <sighs> it's a very strange relationship. You know, there's a milkmaid over there and he's, he's feeling a little confident because he's been having the, the, the relations with all the cows and he goes up to her. He does not know how to talk to a woman. He just starts trying to make out with her and she's like, um, no. Well, that really, really hit him hard. That upset him to his core. Why would she not want to be with me? <sighs> now is where it's going to start getting nasty. Thought it was nasty before. It's going to get more nasty. Okay. More nasty than getting aroused by the murder of animals. More nasty than having sex with cows. Okay. It is. Well, Yoham's mother passes away. Now with Yoham, she was literally the only person that he felt cared for him in any way, shape or form. So now it's like he is just alone, okay? He was 21 years old and he really just felt completely alone. So after his mother dies, he moves to a city that's, that's pretty gross. And I say that. <laughs> That's rude. The place is called Diesberg, Germany, which is why he got the name as the Diesberg man eater. Okay, so he moves to Diesberg. I don't know if you guys know a lot about Diesberg. Seems like a pretty normal place now. Definitely better than it was, but back then in the 1950s, 
it it really wasn't doing so hot because there was factories everywhere there was mining and steel they they were really like mining and steel production were a big deal in germany they were very proud of that and there was just no environmental laws and so there was sulfuric acid falling from the sky there was not much water that was drinkable there was not a lot of animals or plants that you could actually eat and things that grew normally were just toxic and inedible also the streams i'm not i don't know why i'm laughing i don't i'm just keep thinking about yo him and his crazy self okay in the stream it would be like a bright shade of yellow or green and nothing living was in the stream and if it was again it was completely toxic you could not eat anything from there okay so i'm not really sure how they're you know getting food and things i i don't know I, i'm assuming it would be a little bit more expensive or they are eating pretty contaminated foods now like i said yohim's mother died and this was 1955 when she died he moved to this place and he actually found work with his low iq and and no real education he was able to find a job i mean good job yo him you did something you did something so yo him gets a job as a janitor and a bathroom attendant and i'm wondering exactly what a bathroom attendant does but maybe he just like cleaned up after people and handed them a towel I don't know. The janitor seems easier for him, but I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm just like, good. You got a job. You're doing something, something. And like I said, Yohim got his own apartment. It was with governmental services. The government offered services to help him get his own apartment. And yeah, life was seeming pretty, pretty good. He's has his own place he may live in a a city that's you know dying but he has his own place and he meets a waitress now he's very shy he doesn't know how to talk to people the waitress actually asks yo him out and they go to the movies and after the movies you know he's not trying to make any moves on her he doesn't even know what to do so she makes a move on him and tells him to take her to his apartment so he does and you know she's putting her hand on his junk and all that and he just like premature ejaculates this made the waitress very angry and she she was mad she made fun of him and not only that she went and told everybody she could about what happened their local bar she went and told all the ladies so women are just like making fun of him and he's He's getting pretty uh, disappointed with uh, life and very discouraged. So uh, Yohim just goes back to having sex with animals, any animals he could find in the forest or whatever. One little detail, it really doesn't make a lot of difference in the story, but Yohim gets a cat. He, he finds a cat and he takes care of the cat and he feels like him and the cat are friends and then he decided he really wanted to know what cat tastes like so he went ahead and butchered the cat cut it up in pieces admired the work and then he fried it up and ate it he decided he didn't like a uh, cat so yeah all right remember i said that there was like this trifecta number two is harming animals so not only does he like to harm animals, but harming animals gives him sexual pleasure. So should have been big warning signs, you know? I don't think anybody really knew he was having sex with the cows. Could you imagine if somebody walked in on that? Blech. Blech. He's so gross. Okay, so his mother has been dead. She passed away. I, I hate to say it so insensitively but his mother's been dead for about three weeks and this is when yohim commits his first murder one of many that last his killing spree lasts two decades or more without being caught okay so i think he kind of stalked this girl her name was 
Ermgard Strahl, and I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. She was 19 years old and she was just going for a walk. The area was kind of secluded, which is why I think that Johan probably kind of stalked her beforehand, but I don't know. So he's kind of following her and he goes up to her and he's he asked if he can walk with her. And I don't know if she just felt really bad for him or she's just a kind person. I don't know, but she, she obliges and they, they start to walk together and he just tries to kiss her. He starts trying to make out with this girl. Okay. Well, she wasn't interested. So she was like, um, no, thank you. And he rustles her down to the ground. He had a knife with him. Another reason I think this was premeditated. Okay. So he takes the knife Sorry, I just kicked something. This is so intense, you guys. He takes a knife. He stabs her in the throat about four times. Somehow he gets her bra off. He strangles her to death with her own bra. Okay, so she's dead. And he's like, ooh, yeah. Immediately after she was dead, he's taken off her clothes and he tries to penetrate her with his pain. Okay, and... He premature ejaculates on her. He waits around a little bit more, touching on her body. Y'all, this is gross. I know it's gross. You can leave if you want to because it only gets worse, okay? It only gets worse. So he waits around till he can actually have sexual intercourse with her. And then he ejaculates a lot. There's a lot of semen. Then he masturbates over her body. Then he cuts her open and disembowels her. And I think this turns him on, so he masturbates. And then he, uh, he takes the poop on her. He is admiring all of her insides. This, he disemboweled her and it's just, he just felt like he needed to take a poop on her. Whew. All right, so Ermgard doesn't return home and her family starts to get worried, okay? So they, they get a search party together and different articles say different things, but one of them says it took two days to find her. One of them said it, it was pretty quick afterwards. Two days is pretty quick, but eh, I don't know. So police do an autopsy, everything else, and she was actually pregnant. She was in the early stages of pregnancy. So... Johan killed her and the baby. It just makes me hate him just a little bit more. I don't know. Just a little bit more. Now, this is so gross, but it is an important part of the, of the story, this detail. So when the police got to the body and they're looking at all the evidence, and mind you, this is in 1955, so they don't have like the same forensics or I don't even know if they had any kind of stuff like that. So they're examining the body and there is so much semen that they believe that it had to be a gang of men to have done this. And they also think it was a satanic group or something because of how horrific this this murder was just completely horrific okay okay guys this guy is so weird and creepy let's recap okay he's a bathroom attendant that has sex with farm animals he's a rapist he's a murderer he produces large amounts of semen gross like is this story even real I mean it, I know it is but can I, it's so out there it's so crazy so Johan was actually super excited about this he he was on top of the world that he did this this murder and he didn't have any remorse and he didn't think he did anything wrong it wasn't like he was trying to really hide the body or anything like that and he also a lot of serial killers, when they kill someone, they're cutting clippings out of the papers. They're, they they want to know what people are saying. I think they kind of get a little a little high from it. And Johan just didn't care. It just wasn't... He didn't even think of victims as people. They were just animals. 
just something because he would get that funny feeling. Yeah. Well, Yohim also had a, like a rubber sex doll that was life size that he kept in his apartment. And he had lots of child size dolls. And he had lots of candy and toys in his apartment. The neighborhood kids actually called him Uncle Yoham because he was always giving out candy. He would go on walks with the kids around the neighborhood and they would always be returned home to their parents unharmed. He, the parents would even let the kids go to his house and play and they would still come home unharmed. They never, they just thought he was just this poor, slow guy. That was nice. Now, Johan would later tell police that he would have sex with the, the child dolls. He would choke them, strangle them. He liked to put the rubber doll, a noose on the rubber doll while he was having sex with it. I'm not sure if it was a blow-up doll or a rubber doll, but most things say rubber. So maybe it was like very lifelike. I don't know. But sometimes he would have sex with a rubber doll and then he would choke out the little child dolls. He was sick. I think though he was trying to alleviate his funny feelings by doing this because it's a lot easier than going out and finding someone to murder. Am I right? I think I'm right. Okay. He could do that at home all he wants. Seriously. Go do it. Just don't kill nobody. Okay. Okay. So Yohim killed Ermgard on February 8th, 1955. So it was almost a year later that he commits his next murder. Now the exact date of this, no one really knows, but in 1956, a girl named Erika Schluter was strangled to death and then raped. I uh, believe there was two Erikas and yeah, they just never knew what happened to these girls. The odd thing about Joachim is that he didn't have any kind of pattern, okay? He killed this one woman and then he waited a year and then he killed some other people. The first girl he murdered was 19. The next Erica was 12. And I think the other Erica was also around 11 or 12, but I'm not, I don't know anything about it. Okay. And yo him himself didn't really know people's names or he just couldn't remember. I think he, he just murdered so many people. I just couldn't remember. But, but the timings being so different for each of these murders, police were really scratching their heads. They didn't know. They did not think they were related at all. And plus, back in the 1950s in Germany, and I don't know about other places, but they didn't really communicate from city to city. And they didn't have like a database like we have today where you put in the, the type of murder and it might pop something up like this one is similar to this one. There was nothing like that. The police really did what they could. I'm assuming. I don't really know. I don't know. So it was three years later that he commits his next murder that we know of. On March 24th, 1959, Yohim tries to kill another woman. Now, and there's not much known about this other than she got away. And this was very devastating for Yohim. It, his little self-esteem was just so delicate. So he was really wanting to, okay, now I need to uh, wait a little while because I'm feeling bad about myself. So he waits a few months before he attempts to murder someone else. On June 16, 1959, he finds his next victim and her name was Clara Frida Tesmer and she was 24 years old and he, she's walking around and he comes up to her and he tries to get her to go in a field with him. And she's like, no, I don't know you. I mean, who would be like, yes, let's go into the field, you creepy little Gargamel. He really looks like Gargamel to me. That's what I think of the Smurfs and Gargamel. That's what I think of. Okay. So no Gargamel. I'm not interested in going into the field with you where the grass is all high. No, no, no. Well, he didn't like that. So he just punched her in the head. She's a little disoriented. She falls down. He gets on top of her. He starts trying to take her clothes off. Well, she fights back. She fights back. He does ultimately strangle her 
and she passes away and then he does all the nasty stuff that he likes to do to dead bodies he ejaculated all over in her on her face her head her lower abdomen everywhere and this was the first time he looked at someone and thought hmm she looks kind of tasty maybe I should eat her you know there's not a lot of things to eat around here well, I'll eat her so he cuts pieces of her off he cuts her butt off and he takes it home to eat it to eat it later well, now this is a completely different situation than the last because now parts of the body are being missing. Also, there's the year gaps in, in his murders. So, yeah, police just don't really know what's going on. And they actually arrest a mechanic named Henrik Ott. And, or Heinrich Ott. I'm not really sure if I'm saying it right. Heinrich Ott. Ott. I think that's his name. Well, he got arrested for this, this murder that he did not commit. And he ends up killing himself in jail because he's so ashamed of this accusation. It makes him look like a disgusting, horrible monster. Because that's what Yohim is. A disgusting, horrible monster. I mean, the more you hear about him, I thought I would feel bad for him because he's he has such a low IQ. But I don't. Mm -mm. He's a disgusting human being. He is the devil on earth. He's gross. He's just evil. Johim's next murder is only a month after murdering Clara. Manuela Note, 16 years old. Okay, he murdered, he raped her, he masturbated on her. You know, he has all that semen. He has copious amounts of semen. Now, when the police officers show up, this bloody body is just covered with semen, missing her her butt. Officers think it must be multiple men again. This has got to be like a gang related thing because there is so much semen. How could one person create that much semen? Now this, like I said, there's some controversy in the different articles. Now other articles are saying Clara was the first person he ate and other people say that Manuela was the first person he ever ate. Either way, he was eating people, okay? He's eating people and putting lots of semen on them, okay? This girl had semen all over her bloody body, on her face, on her privates, just everywhere. In 1960, for whatever reason, Yohim moves, okay? He moves to another place. He's able to get the apartment again. And the way, th this is the apartment he was in when he ultimately gets caught, okay? It had like a community bathroom upstairs and I don't know if he was renting out a room or how exactly that worked, but he moved and he moved into a new apartment and all of that. But he still has that same reputation. Uncle Johan, he's got his sex dolls, he's got toys galore and candy and he's still hanging out with the neighborhood kids, okay? Make him, make him besties with the four-year-old or five, six-year-olds, you know, around the neighborhood. I don't know. I just can't imagine why any parents would allow this. I don't know. I don't know. However, word of murder of young girls is kind of spreading a little bit, and it seems like women are more concerned if their child is late from school or whatever. So that's good. But Yohim is just a very unsuspecting person. He just is just very slow. So people just don't even see him as a threat. He also got a job when he moved as a janitor. So he was able to find employment and it was about two years later before he committed another murder. Now, if he was committing other murders, there's no record of it and nobody knows. And it's very possible because he really didn't remember that much to begin with. Okay, April 23, 1962, he murdered Petra Geese. She was only 13 years old and he normally liked to strangle women with his hands, but he actually strangled her with her scarf and it was Easter Sunday that he had done this. And this took place in Dinslaken, Brukhausen, after he he murders her, he he rapes her dead body, and again he leaves an obscene amount of semen at the crime scene. Then he cuts off her butt and he takes her left arm. The I think he liked the forearm to the hand because 
I think he thought it made good, like a good human steak. I read that or heard that somewhere. Okay. Gross. Well, another man went down for this too. So here's another reason why this guy wasn't even on anybody's radar. Not only did he have a low, low IQ and just very slow and weak, other men were getting charged with these things. So police think, oh, we're doing our job. We got rid of another one. So the guy was arrested and convicted for the murder of Petra Geese was Vinces Kuhn. I don't think I said that right at all, but he took the fall for it. Not because he wanted to, it just happened. The next murder that Yohim commits is on June 4th, 1962. So it's really close to that last one, okay? Very close. Just months after murdering Petra, on June 4th, 1962, he strangles and murders Monica Taffel. He strangled her, he murdered her, he then raped her dead body, and he cut off sections of her thighs and her buttocks. And evidence showed that whoever had done this had also eaten parts of her body raw at the crime scene. Probably just want to know what it tasted like, little, little creep. Ew, he's so nasty. Blech. Well, guess what? Somebody else gets arrested for this. Somebody else gets in trouble for this. So another man taking the fall. Like, it's crazy. How many are we up to now? This is nuts. He gets arrested, but he later gets released because there's really no evidence and he didn't do it. But the neighborhood, they ridiculed him. They thought he was guilty. They made him feel like garbage and he's just hated life to the point where he killed himself. So what is that? Two men have killed themselves because they were falsely accused of something that Yohim did? Really, you guys? And it's still, it's still getting worse. It's still gonna get worse, okay? Okay. Did I say Monica Taffel was 12 years old? Because she was 12 years old. His next murder was a few months later, September 3rd, 1962, and it was Barbara Brunder. There are different things being said about her, whether she was abducted and they never found her body again, or they did find her body and he strangled, murdered, raped her dead body and then did not take any cuts of meat off of her body. And this confused police because, and who knows, I don't know if he was trying to confuse police. I don't know if he was smart enough to do that. I don't think he was, so what do you guys think? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so there was another one, and she was also 12. Now, after he committed these murders, just about every single time he would commit the murder, he would go home and have sex with the doll more. Like, how, like, how does he, how was he able to have, like, masturbate and have sex so often? I just don't. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how it's physically possible, but hey, what do I know? But yes, this guy is just disgusting. He is disgusting. Now his next murder is almost three years later. So again, the timeline is just so hard to pinpoint who the murderer would be, okay? On August 22nd, 1965, Yohim, a certain thing happens on this day, but normally he goes in these bushes and he masturbates in the bushes. And I think he like watches people and masturbates in the bushes. Okay. I mean, I told you, like, how is he masturbating so much? I don't understand. Anyway, he's, you know, in, 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 uh, pleasuring himself in the bushes and he sees a couple, the couple are in the car and they are making out and they are actually engaging in sex. And so Yohem goes up because he's like, I wanna have sex with that woman that's in the car. So he slashes one of the tires. Instead of the, the couple getting out of the car, they drive away. And But the guy Herman Schmitz, he goes, 
and takes a wrong turn and he ends up right back where he was and there's Yohim and Yohim is like flagging him down and acting like he's in distress and being a good a good guy or trying to be a good guy he gets out of the car to try to help him well Yohim just starts stabbing him in the stomach he stabs the man in the stomach and kills him well, he's getting ready to go for the girlfriend that's in the car, and her name is, is Marion Veen. Well, Marion got over in the driver's seat, and she literally starts the car and tries to run over Yohim. But Yohim, unfortunately, he got all the way. So, but she, but she got away. Okay, so after this happens, he he starts to think maybe he needs to go back to younger females that he can easily overpower that are very vulnerable. The next time and the next person he kills, it was a year later. So he kills Herman and a year later, it is September 13, 1966. He finds a girl, her name is Ursula Rowling and she's 20 years old and he finds her in the park and he does what he does. Okay. He, he kills her, rapes her, copious amounts of semen everywhere. And Unfortunately, the police think it's the boyfriend. His name is Adolf Schickel, and I hope I'm saying that right. But I got at Adolf, Adolf, like Hitler, Adolf. So his name was Adolf. And rumor has it is that he raped his fiance because she didn't want to have sex before marriage. Now, it was very clear that this body had intercourse after it was already dead. And neighbors and friends said they were already having sexual intercourse so it wasn't him but people thought it was Adolf well Adolf being so depressed and also so disgusted by these accusations made he commits suicide he jumps off a bridge and drowns so what is that three people killing themselves because of this man is it three or four now I don't know but this is nuts so I feel like we do have a little bit of a pattern here his next murder is December 22nd, 1966. So that's just a few months from when he did this to Ursula. Now this victim was only five years old and her name was Alana Hark. I think, I hope I'm saying her name right. Her name was Alana Hark and she was only five years old. The way that Yohim describes what he did is that he just really wanted to see what it was like to drown someone. So he takes a five-year-old Alana and he holds her head under the, the creek to see what it was like to uh, drown someone. Again, different articles saying different things. Some of the articles said that they thought it was an accidental drowning, but other articles say that she was raped after her death, so the necrophilia, and her butt was also cut off. So yeah, I don't really know how they were even confused. They said after the autopsy, they could tell that she was murdered and didn't accidentally drown. But I don't know how they would have thought anything different. I don't know. And you know, I'm not really sure if he ate her, but I'm pretty sure he did eat parts of her. But I don't, I don't know. That's guessing. Okay? Okay. Now, I don't know if you guys have guessed it, but Johim Kroll is definitely a necrophiliac. He wants someone who is just completely unable to fight back and basically just dead. Okay. He's so gross. Well, his next victim was Gabrielle Putnam. Put Putnam. I'm not really sure. She was only 10 years old and it was June 22nd, 1967. So it's roughly six months from the last murder. Okay. So he tells Gabrielle, I want to show you some baby bunnies. So, of course, she's like, uh, yes, I want to see baby bunnies. Uncle Johan, that gives candy to everybody. Yes, show me the bunnies. So he takes her and lures her into the field, and there are no bunnies. Actually, there's no bunnies. He just has all these pornographic pictures that he's trying to show her. She doesn't even really know what she's looking at. But then when she realizes it, it's so upsetting. She's just so upset that now she's like, okay, I gotta leave. No, ugh. You know how they say like timing is everything? After she, she sees it, she tries to get away. He tries to strangle her so he could rape her. 
there is a coal mine nearby and I guess the sirens start going off because it's time for the workers to go home. So it's just like swarming with all of these miners. So the girl, Gabrielle, is able to get away. She's so lucky. But Johan just kind of walks away too. Nobody notices him. And I don't think Gabrielle tries to tell on him or anything. So with her being lucky, I have to say, I think that Johan had a lot of dumb luck, okay? So when he would commit his, his crimes, he would just kind of commit them wherever, whenever. It wasn't like he was trying to do it in the same area. It was just, he would be over here, okay, let's do this, whatever. And there were other criminals that were committing similar types of crimes, I guess, you know, raping or murdering. And that is why he wasn't even on their radar. Like, no one suspected this man at all. No one. After Gabrielle got away, I think that kind of like hurt his ego again. So he did not attempt to murder anyone else until about two years later. It was July 12, 1969, and her name was Maria Hetkin. And she was 61 years old. So this was the oldest of his victims. He strangles her. He has sex with her dead body. He does his thing. He does what he does. Okay. And I didn't see any information about him eating her because he would discuss how he thought that younger women tasted better, like children or very young adults. So most likely he left her body unmutilated, possibly. So again, now they don't know who, who, who could have done this. Now, his next victim wasn't until a year later that we know of. On May 21st, 1970, 13-year-old Jetta or Yetta Ron was walking home from the train station and Yohim got her. He did his thing, strangled, raped the dead body. And Yetta's boyfriend, Peter Shea, was accused of committing this crime. And he was ridiculed and just pressured until he actually confesses to this and spends 15 months in jail. Um, I don't know what's worse. I think it's great that he only spent 15 months because he didn't do it. But if you did strangle somebody and murder them, I think 15 months is not enough. But yeah, maybe he got acquitted and he didn't really because he didn't really do it. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is just a mystery to me. Now his next victim, it was six years later. So him, I guess, having sex with animals and uh, his dolls and all of that kind of helps him keep himself under control. Or there's just a whole bunch going on that nobody knew about. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know. Tell me in the comments because I don't believe that he wasn't doing it, but I don't know. Anyway, so his next murder, it was May 8th, 1976. 10-year-old Karen Topher, I don't know if I'm saying that right. 10-year-old Karen Topher, walking home, he strangles her, rapes her, his whole bit, okay? Whole bit. Now, I don't know if he took any of her body parts home to eat, but I think he did. Now, I'm just gonna tell you guys this. This is just so crazy to me. Yohim actually says the reason that he was eating people is because groceries were really expensive and this was just cheaper to eat people. I don't think so, dude. You can say that all you want, but you know it's because it's sexually gratifying to him. Okay? He is nasty. Like the nastiest. The nastiest. Well, you guys, this can't go on forever. He can't be doing this forever. It's been like 20 years, literally two decades of him doing this crap and no one's catching him. Why? Well, normally Yoham didn't mess around with any of his, the neighborhood kids. I think he actually thought of them as his friends. So he wasn't trying to hurt them or eat them, he would go outside of the neighborhood. Well, there was a four-year-old girl in the neighborhood on July 3rd, 1976, <sighs> Johan lured the, he lured, is it lured or lured? He lured, he lured, he lured, 
whatever. He lured the girl, uh, the four-year-old Marion Kettner, into his home offering her candy. Now, he's in the neighborhood. She knows he's Uncle Yoham. He's given her candy before, so this isn't like ringing any bells to her. She's very comfortable. Well, he strangles her. He uh, has sex with her dead body. He does all this stuff. He goes and heads and cuts her up and everything. And being the man that's so challenged, intellectually challenged, he doesn't even think anything of this. He cuts her up, he keeps the pieces that he wants, and then he takes like her lungs and stuff and puts it down the toilet and tries to flush it down. Well, he tells one of the guys that lives there, so if you remember there, he lived in this kind of, I don't know if they had separate rooms or it was separate apartments, but they did share a bathroom in the upstairs on the second floor. So he tells the neighbor, hey, don't use that bathroom. It's clogged up. And he says, well, what's it clogged up with? And he goes, guts. Well, thank goodness this guy went on his hunch and he just went ahead and called the police and said, you know, you need to come out and check this out. Please show up. Please show up to the house. I believe it was the same exact day he had actually killed Marion. They go into his home, they check in the toilet, um, and there are a set of lungs in there, intestines, and they are definitely human. So they just ask him, they just outright ask, do you have any connection to the disappearance of Marion Kettner? And he just tells them, he's like, yeah. Uh, she came over and, um, here, look in my fridge. Here's some pieces of her. I went ahead and, uh, you know, had sex with her dead body and, um, I'm eating her. They look on the stove and there's literally stew cooking, okay? Cooking and her little four-year-old female little baby hand is floating at the top and they see this. I mean, bleh. my daughter's four. I will kill you. I will kill you if you mess with my baby. You bet, no, mm, mm. I'm wondering, I don't know. Anyway, so Johan was under the impression that, yeah, go ahead and arrest me. And maybe I can get these funny feelings, the sexual feelings. You guys will help me to get rid of those so I can just go about my life, you know. So he goes in, the, pol the police arrest him right away. They arrest him, they take him in for questioning. And at first, he's not really saying too much because they are really being aggressive. And that's normally how they, they are when they're interrogating someone, they're aggressive. But because he has a childlike mind, that doesn't work. What he does is he just shuts down. He just shuts down and he's not saying anything. Much like what a child would do if you come at them, they just shut down. It's like they freeze, their mind isn't going to work. So they try something different. They play like a puzzle game with him. They they play games with him and they start talking to him. And then slowly as he gets more comfortable, they start talking about things that are more relevant. Well, he tells them all. He's just telling, telling everything he can remember he tells. Now, this is so weird to me. So everybody wants to know what's going on. The press is on the police's but they just want to know. Everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to know what is going on. The police, they're getting as much information as Yohim as they can. But Yohim is basically like, well, I don't remember. I know this. I don't remember. I don't really know that person's name. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know where I was. I don't know. And then he says, but if you take me there, I can show you what I did and be able to describe to you everything that, that happened. The police oblige. They're like, okay. Let's, let's try that. I mean, whatever. And they invite the news crew there too. And this guy, they have a police officer that's a woman, this poor woman. And he reenacts the things that he did to her on his victims. And I think this actually helped the case, but oh gosh, it's so crazy. But the, the way the guy's mind was, it makes sense for this, I guess. But still totally wild, y'all. Totally wild. Like I said, Johan thought, I'm going to tell them all this information. They're going to do a surgery or do some magic and make me normal and not have these urges to kill and eat human flesh and, and rape it. He 
Instead, he was charged with eight murders and one attempted murder in April 1982 after a 151 day trial. Don't even know why it lasted that long, but that is crazy. So he was convicted of nine life sentences. He was not going anywhere and he didn't last that long. He actually died. He died of a heart attack in 1991 while he was in prison. I just thought that this, this story was so crazy and how this guy is, is so unknown. Let me know in the comments below, have you heard of him? Considering the fact that he killed 14 people or more, and he probably raped many, many more that no one has really heard of him. So now that you've watched this, now this is something that you know and probably will never forget. You may not have wanted to know it, but now you do. So apologies for that. I apologize if this is going to haunt you for a long time because I don't think I'll ever forget this one. Mm -mm. Nope, I won't. Mm -mm. And that's it, you guys. <laughs> I um, I don't think you enjoyed this story, but I hope you found it interesting or fascinating. And yeah, I don't even, this one was just so wild. I'm still like in, in just disbelief at how crazy it was. If you guys enjoyed this story or did not enjoy this story, I would appreciate your feedback and um, I would love a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, um, I hope you still consider giving me a thumbs up because I had to talk about this and it was gross. It was like so gross. Anyway, I appreciate you guys so much just for watching and I really hope you consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell and coming to hang out with me again and again and again. I'm here for you on Tuesdays and yeah I'll see you again next Tuesday have a good rest of your day bye Mwah.